I'll eat it quickly. Keep screaming. I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> this is going again. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I have an intro. I got new important. This is a good sandwich. It should be savoured. You made it. When we were like T minus five minutes on starting this. <laughs> I decided late in the piece to add avocado. All right. Well, let's let's describe for the listener what you're eating. It appears to be a whole grain sandwich. So mm-hmm. the bread is whole grain. Yeah. With avocado and tuna with tomato. Mm. Yes. I would not go the avocado in that mix, honestly. Yeah, we well, can go fuck yourself instead. <laughs> All right. Hello, sandwichless listener. And welcome That's to... That's a hell of an assumption. <laughs> welcome to... I'm doing the intro. They might well, have a sandwich, though. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> God, is this how annoying we are? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Certific... I Cert- could okay, cut that. <laughs> no. Welcome to... <laughs> this is difficult. Yes. Welcome to Statistically Insignificant, which today is a podcast without slides. I have decided to create the world's first audio only podcast i've decided to innovate on the medium shake things up a bit and we're going to uh do a completely ears only experience this is the world's first blind positive podcast my name's dean my pronouns are he and him and i am here in a lightless void where i can only imagine my fellow co-hosts like you the listener i'm choosing to imagine some sort of proud warrior with a large axe He's uh, chanting some sort of uh, magical spell that will solve all the world's problems. So it's Bart. Hi. Hey, how's it going? I go by he and him. And this intro has reminded me of when I came back from holidays once where um, my friend had taken a shirtless photo of me and my weird housemate had drawn me as like a Celtic warrior shirtless (laughs) and put it on the wall. Nice, nice. And why does that remind you? you Sorry, has my description made you awkward? I wouldn't say awkward, but it's well, just I'm gonna cha- it's I'll just change up the back. intro to I'll change the intro to make it more <laughs> awkward just in a different way. I'm choosing to imagine Tess exactly as she is, but with an even larger ass. It's, <laughs> is it's that such a thing even possible? It's honestly kind of inconvenient, but I'm choosing to imagine it that way. Hi, it's Tess. Hi, uh, I go by she and they. I am struggling in this chair apparently, even more than usual. That's right. We yeah. specifically spent a lot of money on getting me a chair that I, is genuinely comfortable to sit in because of the combination of aforementioned, thanks Dean for publicizing that, excessive posterior and the fact that I have arthritis in my hips. Yeah, and so now uh, I'm imagining you not even able to fit in that. And I really, it seems kind of cruel and pointless. So welcome, listener. Uh, again, no slides. We've just got the one slide. Apparently I'm a liar. Tess has prepared a slide, even though it's my episode. Can we get rid of the content on the slide, please? Before we go any further, could we delete that? Thank you. Perfect. I actually have a serious episode prepared. Okay. I'm going to air a large number of petty grievances that I have, and you two will listen and comment upon them. Okay. Uh, we're going to do kind of a Festivus thing. I don't know if you're aware of the... You do realise this entire podcast is me airing petty grievances. I would say yours are slightly less petty than these. Hello, cat. It's my podcast, The Cat's Allowed on the Desk. Okay. This is the first Irwin-enabled episode of Statistically Insignificant. Listener, his back is so close to the microphone, you can hear it. I'm also recording with a cat, but it's under the bed and it keeps coming out to kind of slash at my feet every now and then. (laughs) Okay, so we we are fully cat enabled. Cat is sniffing the microphone. He's sniffing you, listener. You, the listener, have just been sniffed. So yes, this is inspired by uh, the airing of grievances that George's dad does at Festivus, his made-up holiday. It's a Seinfeld reference. Oh, okay. Tess is looking at me like... She's I've never watched Seinfeld. Tess has never watched any property that makes up culture. That's why she's an alien. <laughs> anyway, we're going to jump <laughs> straight occasionally, into it. well, frequently makes Simpsons references. He's, he's fallen out of the habit in the past decade, with me anyway, but he does do it, and I'll just stare at him. <laughs> I have offered Tess that I would create a, like, a curated episode list of uh, <laughs> Simpsons episodes to like, educate her, and she turned me down. I'm like, no, it would only be the good ones. Dean, Dean has to maintain something of an air of mystery. I'm, the first have, eight seasons of The Simpsons is my favourite television show of all time, and I cannot do references for shit, so... <laughs> <it's, laughs> Alright, Bart, you, you can help me come up with the... Bart, next time it's your episode, we're just going to watch an episode of The Simpsons. We'll force her to do it for the podcast. Hell yeah. Do a commentary. Create, yeah, we'll create an episode commentary for The Simpsons. Alright, that'll be April 1st <laughs> next year. Anyway, could we... <laughs> yeah. Could we... Or could we just focus up and focus on what's important here, which is um, my complaints. So, first complaint, complaint one 
is that the Fussy Cat brand cat kibble, the grain-free variety, are the big bags of it. If you tear it open at the pre-made tear point, the tear is not actually low enough to get through the plastic seal. So, like, you just tear off, like, an inch-wide strip of plastic and the bag's still stuck together. I mean, this sounds like a skill issue because it always works for me. No, uh, I'm sorry. I did it. I, listen, I have some tear ability. I would say I am one of the top three tearers in New South Wales alone. In this house, maybe. No. <laughs> so, okay, I see. You're putting me, uh, she's putting me, listen, she's putting me behind the cat. Well, look, he doesn't have thumbs, so we don't know what he could truly do, given the opportunity. <laughs> all I, he need, he'd open the cup and get all the treats. No, I <laughs> like to, see, I, when I tear the treats, they open perfectly. Other people fuck up the treats. I'm a complete ace at cat treat opening. But cat kibble bag opening, I swear, the, the, the ceiling, whatever they do to, like, fuse it together, is inconsistent. So this is an official year fussy cat brand. You are on notice. <laughs> but next time I get one, I'm going to show you how to do it. Look, I, I'm happy to be proven wrong because that means that there's no more fucking up around this. That's complaint number one. We've gotten through it. Thank you. Second, in Sutherland, the main crossing of the main street in Sutherland, if you come around the corner uh, from the street with the kebab place on it and you see that the walk signal is green, even though it's green and you're somewhat close, you can't get across before the lights turn, like the car lights turn green again. Uh, without running in an undignified manner. It's just a second off. That's interesting, because when that happens to me, I run in a dignified manner. Well, that's the thing. If you run in a dignified manner, there's not enough time. And I run at a completely normal speed for a human being. I would say slightly faster even, and way more dignified. And so if I can't do it, nobody can. It's very difficult. Uh, so I'd like to officially complain to whoever put together the traffic signal, the walk signal at Sutherland. I simply walk and make the cars wait. You can't be doing it. You're holding <laughs> up traffic. You're causing major... <laughs> Dear listener, this is some Sydney shit, and I don't approve. I just want to get that on record. Again, I did say petty. There was no... There's been no... <laughs> there's been um, no serious complaint here. There's I, no I pretense. <laughs> well, these are serious complaints, but they are petty. Uh, sorry. Oh, I can't stop belching. What's happened? Anyway, it's probably all the, the avocado I just ate right too, way too quickly. Because I had too much avocado for one sandwich. So I had to just very hurriedly, this is also while I was wait, kind of like duck eat a half of an avocado. It's just soft enough that you can kind of like tongue it into a compliant shape. Did you consider wrapping it up and putting it in the fridge? It goes it? brown. I will only brown an avocado. There's no there's no world where that happens. That's why you wrap it up. It goes brown inside. The, there's enough oxygen in there to fuck it up. If you leave the seed in, it doesn't. Fun fact, if you drivel lemon juice on it, it doesn't. But I'd already taken the seed out and I had no lemon on hand. Skill issue. Olive oil also works as well as lemon juice. Oh, we don't have any olive oil. Yes, we have fuckloads yeah. of olive oil. Where do you look for? <laughs> in the olive oil thing next to the uh, the bottle of it that's intended to uh, easy use with the frying, and there's a five litre can of it under the sink. Complaint the third. Olive oil is not well labelled enough. It's got olive oil written on it. I, it's not well labelled. I said enough. I didn't say it wasn't well labelled. I said it wasn't well labelled enough. Skill issue. Uh, this is... you. Okay, get a new joke, all right? Get a new bit. Repeating the same <laughs> get... bit? That's awful. <laughs> Nobody should have it. Who would do that? I complaint the fourth. Now that I've added a complaint, all of my complaint numbers are thrown off. Complaint the fifth. Uh, most rice cookers, and I believe this is all rice cookers, as I have not seen any that deviate from this. They have provided measuring cups for measuring out the rice, and they're labelled one cup. But the cups themselves are... Almost, but not exactly half of a standard, international standard cup. You know what I mean? But, like, the cup? Yeah. It's because it's for one cup of cooked rice, not one cup of raw rice. Right? I'm attracting complaint the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a rice cooker, so, again, this is not a relatable complaint to me. Well, rice cookers are really good and you should get them. I did, again, relatable is not the aim of the, the, de the, the day. <laughs> or, can I suggest them, though? There's so many people say, oh, it's just a steamer. And that's true. It is just a steamer. But it's it's... Very conveniently put together. And I find steamers have too many bells and whistles. The rice cooker just has on and off. And there's a bunch of recipes you can do where you put stuff other than rice in there. I am pro the rice cooker. I just don't have one. Oh, okay. You are rice cooker deprived. I'm not taking the gravy position on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Dean doesn't know who gravy is. So for the listener <laughs> of our show who also may not know who gravy is, uh, this, is a, this is a mutual acquaintance, shall we say, of Bart and I, who for a very long time was anti-rice cooker on the assumption that you had to stand there and supervise it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine me supervising cooking. No, I don't cook anything that I have to be looking at uh, in intervals less than three hours. The cat just wants to rub on the microphone. Let him. It's my episode. Listener, if I sound muffled, it's because there's a cat head between me and the content. Oh my god. <laughs> and if you can feel yourself being bumped around, that's because he's licking himself. Complaint the... What was I on? No, because I added extra complaints, is what I'm saying. I've added extra complaints. Complaint the next. The fast food company Grilled... 
no longer always puts a rubber band around the boxes that their burgers come in. It's inconsistent. Okay, I have something on this. Grilled is the most perfect fucking neoliberal restaurant in the world. Because you go in and it's like based on some old pub, but it's like super hyper like an Apple store as well. And then you hand over like 40 bucks for like one burger and one beer. You know in the back of your mind that they have fired staff for asking for minimum wage. And then they give you a little cap and you take it to three charities And whoever gets the most gets more. But no matter how many caps the buckets get, they don't add extra money to the charities. It's just playing them off each other. Horrible. Horrible experience. Yeah, I hear you. I I see you. However, I'd like to say that it is not a perfect neoliberal company because they no longer always put a rubber band around the boxes that their burgers come in. (laughs) And as somebody who collects rubber bands to add to a rubber band ball, these were highly coveted bands. They're just the right thickness that they don't slide off the curvature of the ball and they're long enough that you can get like six, seven loops if you're brave. At the size the ball currently is. That's true. But all I'm saying is those bands will continue to be valuable as the ball grows larger because they are thick and... and Meaty. And, and yeah, l- lengthy. I am entreating Grilled to change nothing about their practices, <laughs> nothing about their relationship to labour or charitable organisations, but I am entreating them to publish some kind of guide explaining how to prompt them to include the rubber band every time. Have you considered... Acquiring rubber bands yourself directly. No, the, the point of the rubber band ball is not to be like buying rubber bands. It's meant to be rubber bands that you find on the street, rubber bands that you receive incidentally through other sources. This is These are my personal rules about the rubber band ball. What I would do for the collection of rubber bands personally is uh, get a job at, the, at a large postal company that are uh, <laughs> delivering letters in which there are many rubber bands floating around. I feel like that'd be too easy. To me, Like this is kind of like a challenge run. If you follow me, like, <laughs> I see one on the street and then like a little, like a little child seeing a coin, I like scamper forward oh, and I pick up the like horrible sweaty rubber band. I should add an amendment to that last one. They pay you such that you are still excited like a little child seeing a coin on the street. That's true. I suppose I could have stolen them from the office supplies when I was in an office, but now I am just a work from home guy. I okay. could plate the next. Okay. But have you considered that you could get your own rubber bands and then they would be tax deductible? I'm not putting that would the rubber band ball is a long term project. Once it gets too big, it starts becoming weird. Right now, it's a little quirky hobby. If the rubber band ball gets to the size of like a soccer ball, it's weird. It's too weird. Okay. So I'm not doing that. I'm not rushing to the point where it's weird. You, you don't want to get in the Guinness Book of World Records? Uh, I don't, don't have the money for that. No. <laughs> next complaint. What was my next complaint? It's right here. No, I had another complaint that was a riff on the previous complaint. Don't look at me, you haven't written it in the notes. You riffed! You riffed <laughs> over my riff. All right, we're going to the next complaint. The Pathfinder 2nd Edition Class Ranger is poorly designed in relation to the rest of the Pathfinder 2E system, as it mostly relates to itself and its own internal mechanics and not to common design elements. What's this fucking nerd shit? <laughs> uh, this makes Ranger difficult to use, interestingly, with a lot of the newer customization options, like specific weapons and archetypes which are based around those elements they refer to them. But because Ranger doesn't key off of those uh, common design traits, uh, it just doesn't mesh well with the rest of the system. I mean, this it's fun enough to play. This could be a board game. This could be a tabletop game. This could be a video game. I don't no, know what it, it could only about. be. It could only be the second edition of Pathfinder, one of the world's most popular tabletop RPGs. But sure, that's fine. <laughs> uh, Tess has abducted the cat to stop him standing in front of the microphone. She's now cuddling the cat. Uh, I believe she's not paying full enough attention to this very important episode of the podcast. Yeah, see, the cat is. He wants to go back on the desk. Listen, you've just been flicked with the tail. I hope you can hear these thumps and thuds. <laughs> I really hope those are coming through clearly. All right, the next complaint concerns you. You ate the lychees that your mother got me for my birthday. You also ate some of the lychees. I did not eat them in a drink for you. I remember this. Oh, no, Te- Steph put them into a drink for me. Then you ate some of the lychees. I drank some of the lychees. Therefore, this is an invalid complaint. No, I did not choose to consume the lychees at that time. But you did. There were two, you Therefore, ate, you ate, okay, I'm altering, hang on, I'm reaching over and I'm using the keyboard, changing the notes, cat, do not lick my face. Okay, well, so Tess ate the majority of the lychees that my mother, that her mother, <laughs> and I suppose my mother outlaw, got me for my birthday, which was only nine days ago, so this is still a raw wound. There's an uneven number of stairs going from platform one of Redfern Station to Redfern Concourse, meaning hypothetically... That if you were doing double steps in a packed crowd, you can accidentally overstep and make a fool of yourself falling over. 
How many times have you done this? It's, I said hypothetically. It's a hypothetical complaint. This one's an easy one. Move to the much better city of Melbourne. That is admittedly a solution. However, <laughs> if by chance you were in Sydney as a Melbourne resident and getting off the train at Platform 1 of Redfern Station, attempting to go up the stairs in double step in a packed crowd, you could fall over at the top because there's one less stair than you're expecting. <laughs> Yeah, so that one that one's actually has a broad appeal. Lots of people go to Redfern Station. I believe it's one of the most heavily trafficked. So there you go. Next complaint. Sorry, I just want to get through these very quickly, although I'm not sure what I'll do once I do get through them. I was going to say, we're at 20 minutes, so... It's going to be a short episode. It's going to be a short episode. <laughs> Unless my co-hosts get off to their To be fair, ass. I think mine was a short episode too, but uh, I at least did some research and read some books and shit. <laughs> um, I have done research, thank you. you know how many times I, I had to count those steps. <laughs> Uh, the item dwarf. What do you reckon the margin of error on that estimate is? One? Yeah, but that means you could be completely wrong. There might, in fact, be an even number of steps. If there was an even number of steps, then hypothetically I wouldn't have fallen over. So your measuring instrument is whether or not you fell over at Redfern? My measuring instrument is uh, repeated, uh, intimate, personal, hypothetical experience. Okay. <sighs> The item dwarf... Did any children laugh at you when you fell over? She's waiting until I start the next one before she interrupts. <laughs> There's a, a shit-eating giggle on her face right now. This is called comedic timing. <laughs> oh, I'm not familiar with that concept. I know. <laughs> right, here we go. She's got another one for us. The item Dwarven Mithril Hammer... No, she's going to let me go through with it. In the game Final Fantasy XIV... Can't is be... 14 an odd or even number for you? It's an even number. All right, I can do that much mathematics. I can divide by two. Divides uh, into seven. There's seven twos in 14. Well done. That hammer can't be dyed to change its colour, uh, despite the fact that it's one of the more interesting shapes for a weapon. So in Final Fantasy XIV, you can uh, pick what, what your weapon looks like, provided it's the same type. And uh, it's a very interesting shape weapon, which would make it useful to use for like uh, outfits, but you, um, you can't dye it. So it's only a kind of horrible copper green. Is 14 the World of Warcraft one? <laughs> <laughs> It's. it's... <laughs> I would like you, dear listener and Bart, to please imagine the most pained expression, <laughs> like somebody had just driven a knife into the side of his body. It is in the same genre of game, the MMORPG, <laughs> as World of Warcraft. Yes. However, I would say that the appeal of Final Fantasy XIV in all the ways in which it is not like World of Warcraft. It's been very interesting as Dean has um, played. Final Fantasy fourteen over the past how many years now? A year? Yeah, a it's year been, and a bit. I'm pretty sure it's been more than that. Not two. Somewhere between one and two years. Okay. Because he was a um he was a WoW player for a very, very long time. Long time. Including raids and everything, had a guild, all the rest of it. And he has for a long time before playing this game been had I guess a fraught relationship to wow since <laughs> cataclysm yeah cataclysm yeah yeah so because like a long time ago because yeah. <laughs> he stopped playing just before cataclysm if i remember rightly and then came back for Cata the end of cataclysm yeah and yeah. then sometime later he, he bought me a subscription for a month so i could play it for the first time and i leveled a character to what was full level at that point and then stopped playing altogether but now his complaints about the choices that WoW made in the intervening time have gotten more and more strident over the years, and now <laughs> that he is seeing writ large the choices that could have made that he sees as better gameplay, he has been bitching twice as much about WoW <laughs> since he started I, try, I do make an effort not to, but there's a lot. I specifically have not put a World of Warcraft complaint on this, or else it would be half the runtime of the fucking episode. We've got but, time. It's only 20 minutes. <laughs> I have a video game uh, complaint. Is that in one of the updates to Dead Cells, they removed the Katana Sword, which was the best weapon. It's the one I finished with it. So they didn't just nerf it. They just removed the entire yeah. weapon. <laughs> I think you now have to find it in like one of their new impossibly hard levels to like... Because it's a roguelike, right? So you have yeah, to like... Yeah. Uh, oh, so they didn't remove it. They changed your access to it. Yes, but okay. it used to be that you would keep the weapons after you'd found the blueprints for it. Not that you'd keep them, but, like, you'd find them throughout the game, you know? They just, like, removed it from the available ones to find throughout the game. Oh, so you don't... Un it's not unlocked now, it's just forever kind of a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's always behind some kind of gated challenge thing. Okay, interesting there. Well, I suppose it is technically unlocked. It's just not in the, the usual drop pool, if you want to. Well, I already got the blueprints for it, and then they took them away. That's what I'm saying. This is the, the neoliberal reality. This is <laughs> This is wokeness um, ruining uh, Run amok. what it was otherwise. Exactly. Woke, the political correctness gone mad. Next complaint. Moisturizer makes you too wet. When I put moisturizer on, you're looking at me very strangely. I feel like this is another skill issue, to be honest. When you put moisturizer on, no matter how little you use, you picture later, you picture the feeling of having sort of nice moist skin. However, the coating of moisturizer is just too, it's too, too liquid. It's too goopy. You're using an oily moisturizer. It's the moisturizer that you gave me. No, it's, it's there. Yes, listener, I am. You can hear me. I'm moving to obtain the moisturizer. I'm going to give... Listen, please imagine me applying moisturizer to myself. Okay, you should try this one, then. With evening primrose oil. Yeah, this Ooh. is a really good one. This one is Nivea Soft. Refreshingly soft moisturizing cream. This one has jojoba oil and vitamin E. Mm. Here, listen, I'm demonstrating. I'm putting the merest touch of it on my finger. Test can confirm. Yes, you have some moisturizer on your finger. It's a very small amount. I'm now applying it to the creases of my nose, which sometimes get a little dry. Right? applying it i can do both sides of my nose you've left like a smear of it there that's what i'm saying there's too much it's too wet dean applies it too thickly you okay listen remember rewind the podcast to where we confirmed that i was using a infinitesimal quantity of moisturizer upon myself anyway too wet so now my nose feels wet it's because you just applied it you've got to give it a minute to seek seek in <sighs> seep in i have spread it quite thin Okay. All right. You still need to give it a bit of time to see Ben. But your opinion, please confirm. I I, I don't really have one. Uh, it's not not been a problem in my life. But maybe I, I probably should use a bit more moisturizer than I currently do. I guess I don't know. Like ah um... uh, well then for you for you I would recommend <laughs> I would recommend the product Redwin Vitamin E Cream with Evening Primrose Oil. They have recently, uh, to my immense frustration, remade the container. Uh, it's no longer as recognizable as it was. Yep. But it's still the same product in a different container. Oh, the, the name of it's on there. Ooh, it's not recognizable enough. See, this is the olive oil complaint. I'm going back. That's Listen the same re- olive oil bottle that we've had Listen for five years. Listen, rewind to when she said that uh, it was a skill issue of me not being able to read the bottle. She can't find moisturizer even though it's labelled. Uh, it's right there. I did find it. Next complaint. Let's get off this topic. The staff at Sutherland IGA. I'm calling you out specifically. And doxing us in the process. Uh, I've already mentioned Sutherland. <laughs> they insist that they do not sell a premium vegetable pie when I attempt to purchase one. I take the pie out of the hot food locker thing. The Bain Marie. The Bain Marie. I put it in the little bag, I take it to the front counter, and I say, this is a premium vegetable pie. The pie has the crust of one of the premium pies. Okay. It's identifiably a premium pie. I then eat the pie. It's full of vegetables. There is no meat content in the pie. It is a premium vegetable pie. And in the Bain Marie, the label says premium vegetable pie. When I go to the counter, they say, we don't sell a premium vegetable pie. It's not in the system. I inform them that they can go and look, but they never do. They don't. They just tell me they don't have one. And I said, well, it's one of the premium pies, and they just put it through because they all cost the same, right? But I, I'm i not the crazy one. I've taken a picture. I tried to show them the picture <laughs> on my phone, and they wouldn't look at it. Dean has found an SCP object in the local idea. This is not a fucking cognito hazard. It's a pie. <laughs> I would like to uh, say that I really appreciate and like the work of the East Preston IGA. I think you do a really good job and I like that because I'm a regular, you kind of like keep me up to date in specials and that kind of thing. Maybe you need to shop around for a better pre-made sandwich, but you know, that's just a, it's a minor complaint. I can live with a bad one or just make my own sandwich, I guess. Do they do a premium vegetable pie by chance? Listen, if you're hearing the thud of the cat impacting on you, that's... That's just a gift for you. They don't have a uh, pie warmer, but they do have like pies that you can take home and put in the oven. And I believe that there is a premium ve- vegetable one. Okay, I do recommend it if it exists or if, even if it doesn't exist, but you can still obtain it. I do recommend IGA's premium vegetable pie. I do like the IGA. The service in every other respect is fine. It's just their strange object permanence blind spot concerning this particular product that in fact has a label. It is labeled. I am not... The crazy one. <laughs> Next complaint is aimed at the creature sitting in front of me, Erwin the cat. Erwin the cat, when he sits on my desk, 
sits at the exact position that his tail, when it whips back and forth happily, uh, smacks my mouse or my mouse finger with enough force to cause it to click. He's quite a muscular cat, so uh, it's difficult to resist the force of the tail whipping against my hand. It can cause me to click on various things. And if anything in my search history is suspect, <laughs> because the cat clicked on the link and not me. Okay, but the cat's not typing the search terms in. That's not... I'm saying if he clicked on a link. Anything typed in, that's fine. Okay. That's that's on me. That's fine. It's whatever. I own up to everything um, suspect in my search history. <laughs> I own up to nothing suspect in my search history. That's all Dean <laughs> using my computer for nefarious purposes. I see. Listen, see, that's a funny joke that she's saying because I can't use her compu- computer as she has a non-human usable keyboard. <laughs> she's one of those sideways mouses that only freaks have. And then, Freaks uh, and people with fucky joints. And then, um, uh, yeah, one of the keyboards that's like broken in the middle and has a strange hump, like you're holding onto a wizard's orb. It's bizarre. It's wrong. Uh, she uses it so heavily that the keys themselves... They're still labelled. The old ones weren't. That the keys, like the, the labels on them, get rubbed off. So you go to click a key and you're like, where the fuck is it? Because like the, the tactile sensation is not... The cat is just... Cat. Sat on the notes. <laughs> the cat is sitting on the notes for the next episode. <laughs> All right, everyone, we know what the next episode concerns. It's the cat's anus print. <laughs> <laughs> Little star right there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, Tessa's keyboard. I can't be using your computer to look at um, suspect search terms as I wouldn't be able to type them. It's pointless. Tessa's, can you just log into my computer and do this so-and-so? It's like, fucking hell, impossible challenge. <laughs> I'm here for 15 minutes individually typing the fucking keys out. This is another skill issue. I suppose... Insofar as the skill that I have an issue with is esoteric and bizarre, yes. <laughs> All of the keys are in the standard QWERTY formation. I haven't reprogrammed this one to be something else, like Dvorak. It's still, like, angled weird. All of my instincts are off. Dean is an abominable hunt and pecker, by the way. I know, I'm a very proficient hunt and peck typist, thank you. If you wear glasses, a face mark for... Face mark... This motherfucker said face mark. If you wear glasses... A face mask forces warm air towards your glasses and causes them to fog up. This is deep 2019 material or 2020 material. I was going to say, this is not 2019 <laughs> material. I mean, maybe, I guess, in Australia, when we were, we, we were all wearing, like, the masks to avoid choking to death on, like, bushfire smoke. <laughs> sure, That's late but... 2019. But it, on the whole, for our international audience, this will be a 2020, 2021 sort of vibe. Absolutely. I, I still wear the face mask. My face mask. Oh, I said it again. <laughs> I still wear... <laughs> Moving on to the next complaint. Uh, my final petty complaint, I couldn't think of anything else more pressing to complain about, is that um, YouTube ads are always at a wildly different volume to whatever ad, whatever video they appear on. So that if you're lying in bed, like listening to something and it gets to the end, it'll then blast a KFC ad that sends you into fucking orbit. Yeah, you just finished listening to the end of um, the entire album, Age of Aquarius. Why the fuck are you getting ads on YouTube? Uh, because I listened to it on the Safari browser on my iPhone. Ah, because I will Skill not issue. Pay, because I will not pay for Spotify or YouTube Red or whatever it is. If you're going to be doing it in bed, though, why don't you just bust out the laptop where you've got the ad, ad blocker and you can you won't have any ad. I do not have a laptop. Fair enough. I do not have a uh, desktop PC, so you win some, you lose some. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I refuse to play for Spotify, YouTube Red, RedTube, any of those. Um, I instead just stream it on my phone. Yeah, and then it, it wakes me up. Because if you're listening to, like, a two-and-a-half-hour bizarre prog metal album... And it, like, has one of those intros that takes 15 minutes of it slowly getting quieter and quieter. And then the fucking KFC ad blares through. It's not even for a product. It's good. Anyway, uh, that's the end of my complaints. Uh, hosts, Bart, you're um, standing there shirtless, still casting that spell. That must be a, um, a potent spell you're going to cast. As I it's a ritual. You're, yeah, you're doing ritual casting. Any petty complaints you want to get out here for the April's Fool episode? I think I used to do these for all at the start of our paywall episodes. No, those were the specific threats. <laughs> yeah, you suppose you can make some specific threats as well, if that's of interest. I have a petty complaint. Three days ago, Dean told me he was going to vacuum the house. Listen, we don't need to, <laughs> we don't need to discuss this on the podcast. I said I might vacuum in the sense of, like, I might do it as a leisure activity. It was not a commitment. No, you said, yes, today I will do the kitchen and vacuum the house. Cause- yeah, I, okay, I said them declaratively, but I meant, like, if I fucking felt like it. And I did do the dishes. Not that day. I have done the dishes. 
I have done the dishes <laughs> that I referred to in that moment. Tess, do you have any worthwhile petty complaints? <laughs> I'm sorry, there's a contradiction there. Mm. My no. worth, that was a worthwhile pay to complain. I would like to complain about the streaming service Netflix. Why the I'll fuck are you it. making it harder and more expensive while you put out shitter and shitter content? Uh, I believe I've read a book on this. Um, <laughs> something, something capital. <laughs> I believe that would be because, because, because money is no longer free, Bart. I think that's sort of why that's happened. Yeah, but come on, like... You could get some good directors in there if you want me to keep my subscription. Come on, guys. Which like, I not... recommend just stealing the content. It will drive Netflix Except for ours. Fast. Except for ours. Pay for our Patreon. Yes, please pay for... <laughs> if, you want, if you want some more uh, Owen content, for example, the bonus episode for February is five minutes of Owen getting patted and scratched and rolling around. Honestly, though, I keep Netflix because it has Neon Genesis Evangelion on it. And I don't, the, like, I want to buy the DVD, but I don't have a DVD player yet. And to torrent it, it's like, um, it was like 180 gigs or something, and I can't fit that on my computer. So I'm keeping Netflix until I buy the DVD of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Well, no, what you do is you get an external hard drive for it. <laughs> All right. I got nothing else. That's, that's, that's the entirety of a Dean produced episode of Statistically no, Insignificant. Uh, Dean written. I'm going to be the one editing this. <laughs> I mean, okay, in the sense that you will edit it, but in the, in the sense of produced in that I brought it forth into being, that I wrote the notes, that I said the majority of the words, that I did all of the, what you might call, the hard work of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> How long did it take you to write these notes? Uh, what time is it? 2.48. Um, my, how long have we been recording for? 40 minutes. Eight minutes. <laughs> okay. Editing this episode is going to take me about two hours. Okay. Well, that... Sorry. Sorry. Can I make a little reference? Skill issue. Skill issue. I'm having another avocado. Goodbye. <laughs>